Hey guys, so a lot of you have said that you liked our intro, so we wanted to show you how we made it. So for starters, this is After Effects, and this is an After Effects tutorial. I'm doing this on a Mac, so it might be a little easier if you have a Mac, but if you have a Windows, it's completely possible to do the exact same thing. So let's start by just making a new composition. I generally make it 4K, and this is kind of just the preset. I'm just going to call this Intro. And this is fine. It probably won't even be 10 seconds long, but we can just leave it at that for now. So to start, I'm just going to drag in a picture. I'll just do this one. You can do whatever pictures are stable. You could do it with video footage. You could do it with whatever. So the reason that looks all pixelated is because it's on quarter. You don't want to make it full. And this um, setup for my After Effects, if you go to Windows Workspace, I generally just use text because that's just how this looks. So it might be easier to follow along if you set yours to text. So I'm going to just mask out this picture. I'm just going to grab the pen tool, zoom in a little bit. I know this picture is a little pixely. It's just because it's kind of small. It won't really matter. So just click along the edge of your worse or you know you could do it with real life pictures whatever um, if you'd like to do a curve click and drag and that'll curve it personally for me it's a little faster just to click I always like to go in a little bit inside my pictures because you're not really going to be able to tell and it always leaves off some little green from the background or whatever that looks a little bad if you zoom out so that's just my general method. So um, just some information on After Effects. If you don't have After Effects and you still want to make something like this, you can get a seven day free trial. If you take longer than seven days or whatever reason can't do the seven day trial, you can buy it monthly, yearly, you can buy the whole creative cloud, whatever you need. So the intro, I'm going to make it as simple as I can, but it's probably going to be a little easier for you to follow if you have previous After Effects knowledge. If not, I'm going to show you the steps. So if you don't understand some of the language, just follow what I do. It's not that complicated. If you haven't ever used the 3D tool in After Effects, it's pretty neat. It's really easy to use. So if you look here, I've got this one little piece of the background still hanging through. Just zoom in on it, and you can just take the pen tool again and mask just around that part. And then if you open up your little box down here, you can go to mask, and then it's the orangish mask, and just make it subtract, and that'll get rid of it. So there's the mask. It looks decent. You can always go through and, like, say this point, you know, drag a point around, make it look a little better. Now that's just going to work. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. This will be my background. I'm going to just pick a teal. It's kind of green, you know, whatever color you like. I think it's a little bit better if you pick a color scheme, you know, if you're going to go with some reds, maybe stay with reds. If you're going to go with blues, you could do blues, you could do like blues and purples, but if you do like a rainbow, sometimes it just looks a little weird. So to make these 3D, you're going to go to this toggle switches. Yours might look like this, but it doesn't matter. Just click that little toggle switch modes. And this little 3D box cube thing, that'll make everything 3D. You can see how it changed. It has, now it has the Z space, it has the Y, and it has the X. So that's kind of like if you imagine a graph in math or science. That's just kind of the same way as you'd imagine it on a graph. So to see this better, if you turn your active camera, go to custom view. You can see if you go up here to this camera tool, you can kind of go around your solid. It's not that impressive right now, but 
you know, we'll make it something nice. So to move these um, layers around, you're just going to open the box. And if you go to transform, you'll have three options rather than the original two. This is now your Z space, so you can slide it forward and back. As you can see, it's going behind that solid. It's going in front of it. And then these will change it. You know, you can go up and down. You can go left and right. And then also, here's your rotations. That'll rotate it around. And then you have this one, which will go around that way. Um, it might help if you take this tool and move your anchor point to the center of your picture. Might make it a little easier to rotate it later on. For now, I'm just going to make a kind of floor. I'm going to click Command C, Command V, and that'll copy my layer. Then I can go up here to Solid Settings, and if I want to make it, you know, a little darker, lighter, I can change that very easily, and I won't have to make it a 3D layer again. Saves a little time. So see how it's moving? It's a little easier to sell the rotations on a solid, you know. That would look interesting. So this will just make it my floor. And if you go exactly to 90 degrees, it'll be perfect. Then I'll just have to move it down. And then you can move your tool and try to line it up. You can turn on snapping. If you're snapping here, that'll help if you want to drag it around over here. You kind of see how it's kind of grabbing certain points. Personally, that's not my favorite thing. I like to just move it. I feel like it grabs weird points. So you can see it's still sticking through there. It's kind of important to just spend some time making it look good. If not, you'll notice later on, and then it'll bother you, and you'll have to move it. So that's just a very simple little object. So my horse is kind of flying over there. So let me open up his layer and move him around. So I gotta move him down. Cause I kinda want him to be standing on that floor, but he's a little far forward, so let me just drag him back a bit. And I don't really like how his hooves are sticking down through it. So drag him up. Up just a little bit. You can find good pictures where the hooves are flat. It's a little easier to deal with. If you have one where they're running and the feet are all messed up because they're on a hill. You can still make it work and rotate them, but it's just a little faster to do this. So, I'm going to go back to Active Camera. And it's a little weird looking because it's zoomed in, but we'll fix that later on. For now, just work on getting your, your little shape to look okay. So, I'm going to make text. I'm going to say JSV Productions. You can say anything you want. Your name, subscribe, whatever. So... You know, change your font. Um, with it being an intro, I would suggest something readable. If you do a really scripty font, no one's really going to be able to read your name. And, and that's kind of the point of your intro, right? Sometimes bold looks better because it's easier to read when it's moving. Oh, look, we can do a Disney font. Um. I'll just go with, so to make this be able to be seen, you have to click your 3D button. If not, when you go to, if it's not 3D, and I go over to my custom view, you see you can't see it. Like it's there, but you can't see it. So make it 3D. So your text here, if you move around your solid, you can see it's kind of sitting through the solid. It's not on either side of it, and it's also, it's printed backwards, technically. So, to fix that, just open up your little transform menu, and go to the third option here, and I would drag it, if you drag it to the positive, it'll go on that side. If you drag it to the negatives, it'll go on this front side. And then, just make sure it's not, if you go right here to the side view, you can see if it's sticking off, see if I drag it way too far this way. It'll be floating out there, and that'll look weird. So just make sure you have it against the wall, but not through it. You can also, if you want it to sit in front, you could also bring it way up here with your horse. 
maybe make it just a little bigger. I could drag it down. You can experiment with it, try it different ways, export it, see what looks better. Um, make sure it doesn't go through the bottom. It's going to be a little bit um, weird with a J. Some fonts are better than others. So I'm going to put it on front of my horse, but I also don't want it to stick off into space. Looks okay. So, I kind of have a weird open space on my wall. So, to make that look a little less boring, I'm going to copy this layer, Command C, Command V. That's my background solid here. I'm going to change it and go to solid settings, and I'm going to make this one a little lighter. Let's go there. Looks okay. And then I'm going to go to effects, I'm going to go to transition, and I'm going to just try a grid wipe. The grid wipe is the effect that does exactly what it says. It does a little wipe. And I think that might look interesting just on the background. So I'll make the completion 100. Then part way through it, I'm going to make it be zero so it has a complete wipe. And then I'm going to make it do it again. So if you render through that, it's going to be slowly. But you can see the the uh, lighter color coming in at the edges. And it's not going in real time, I don't think. But I think it'll be a little bit interesting for the background. And just to change it up a little bit, I'll just make the rotation a little different. Like, there we go. Not quite that much. Make it a little different. Okay, that might look decent. Another thing you can do is if you want to make just some shape, it doesn't really matter. I usually do an eclipse. And I'll have to make it 3D so you won't see it at first, but make an eclipse, make it 3D so you can see it. I'm going to make it white. Actually, I'll make it black. I think that might look good with the text. And then if you go over to help or effects and search tur turbulent displacement, it's a neat little effect. Interesting. It was sitting behind my solid. That's why you couldn't see it. Just drag it forward. Again, you're gonna have to kind of watch your placing. You might want to go to a side view and make sure nothing's funky. That should probably be okay when I have it in motion. So I'm gonna bring up my amount of displacement quite a bit, and I'll just maybe bring up the complexity just a little bit, and then I'll just change my evolution. So. I'll Make a little keyframe, you click the stopwatch, it's keyframe. It's what I did with the other effect. And just drag it to the end, and I'll just make it evolve. So during that span, it's going to evolve into all these different shapes. So let me change this to quarter so it'll render a little better. And you can see how it's changing in the background. So it just gives your, your still object a little bit more life and you can play around with that you can try making it really complex you can try making it bigger or smaller you know you could overlay a white one with the black one that might look interesting but for now I'll just leave it like that it kind of moves when you move around it's okay it's supposed to do that you can also put text around the bottom which is kind of interesting Ooh, I probably should drag that up you can see how it's coming through the bottom a lot of times you have to do that with the turbulent displacement just be safe and drag it up so it doesn't go through your ground. You know, something that goes too high up there. Sometimes you just have to render it and see what you need to do. The the 3D space is a little bit weird. Sometimes it'll shoot things where they're not supposed to be. So this other side's blank and really boring. So I'm gonna add some stuff over there. I'm going to go back to full. I'm going to go back to my active camera. 
and I'm going to import another a picture. I'll try this one. So the reason they're so small is just because it's 4K and that's pretty big compared to what a lot of computer screens or pictures will take as, but it's fine. You really won't be able to notice. So just carefully mask around another picture. You can also do this in Photoshop if you actually want to mask. I feel like it's easier to keep it all in one program, but you can also download Star Stables man art or whatever they call it that they keep uploading. They've got a bunch of the horses and stuff. Might save you some time if you really don't want to go around all these photos. Okay, so now I have another picture, and I would like to put that on the other side. Make sure you make it 3D. Go back to your custom view. So, again, this one's kind of sitting in between, confused on which side it should be on. Just drag it the other way. Unless you want it to stay through the wall, that's fine. I mean, it could look kind of interesting, especially when you show the picture, it just looks weird with text. I'll drag him this way. You can also click that and physically type in where you want to put it. Okay, that's okay. So, on this side, I'm going to just copy and paste my text layer. I'll have to type it again. And to get it to be read in the correct orientation, you're going to have to rotate it. So let me bring it back over on this side so we can see. So see how it's backwards? See how I was talking about the rotations? That one make it flat. If you want to put it under on the bottom, that one will fix it this way. So if you make it 180 or negative 180, it'll be a perfect rotation. So I kind of like where that's sitting behind the horse. Might push it back so it's against the wall a little more. You don't have that gap. And then I'm going to make this not say yes to preference. I'm going to make it say enjoy the video. Okay, that looks good enough for now. You can see how the, the uh, grid wipe is on both sides. Um, you can also copy and paste this turbulent thing on the other side if you want to. If you feel like it's boring, it's up to you. I would change the displacement if you did so it didn't look at the exact same copy. But that's a good enough little model for now. So how I can make these all move at the same time, you're going to go to Layer, New, Null Object, and then you're going to go back to the other mode. Sorry. Yes, that's right. So you have a null object here, and you should make your null object 3D, by the way. And then click this little parent link thing, and you're going to drag it to the null object on all of your other layers. You can see how the parent and link boxes are changing to say null 1. That's because they're all parented to that. So this null object, you'll only have to move your 
your transitions or your effects or whatever on this one. So if I go back to my active camera, you can see how when I move this, they all move because they're all collected to the null object. That's helpful. Saves a lot of time. Um, since it's too big, bring it back in Z space. And I need a background. That's really boring. So I'm going to go to layer, new. Um, I'm going to just do a solid and I'll make it really dark, tealish. There's a million ways you can do backgrounds. This is just really simple. If I put that behind there, and then I'm going to import a texture. So I have this little texture. If shift, it makes it even. That looks really bad, but that's just a random texture I found on the internet. It's like ground. Look up texture. You can find a billion things. So I'm going to go to my blending mode and I'm just going to change it to overlay and you can kind of see how the background got some texture. I think it looks interesting. It's kind of a little bold. You might want to change the opacity and just make it a little less noticeable. Then another thing you can do is you can make a um, new solid and give it just kind of a vignette. Make it black. And then I can take this um, eclipse tool, drag a eclipse across the whole thing, open up my Mac mask box, change the subtract, and then give it a feather. So if I put my mask menu back probably a little bit, and then just give it an intense feather, it'll just be a nice vignette. And you can change the opacity on that too if it's too dark for you. I think that looks okay for a background. I think what I did in the intro was just fractal noise. If you go to effect, well, let's click on the thing and go to effect. I clicked on like a solid. So it's gonna be buried behind. Let me make a new solid. Doesn't matter. And then if I just went to effect, or um, well, no, it wasn't fractal noise. I think it was just fractal. Yep, that's what I had in the background. You know, you can change it. And if you wanted to do this for a background too, that's what it looks like in the video. But personally, I'm just going to go with the um, vignette and the texture. Now to actually do some of the animation in it. So see it's going to move when I turn it. So I'd like to start on this side. These are your keyframes. If you see it appears over here on your timeline. And if you move over here and move it, it moves. And through this area in the middle it's actually moving. So that's just kind of what the keyframes do. So you can just check a few of them. And then if you want to move it later, this will make it twist that way. And I can kind of just move it a little bit, manipulate it so it's got some motion. I feel like it's a little too up close and personal. Let's move that back. Um, so, let me change this to quarter so it'll render better. If you want to make these look smoother, FN, F9 key, it makes them easy, it's a little smoother, so don't just stop suddenly at the same speed. And then I would just keep it moving and make it change. So this is a lot of just trial and error, see what you think looks good. I think it would look good if it flips underneath there. It moves over to that side. Then move to, oops, back on. 
them that way. In the position, possibly down. And you can just play around with this, see what you look good. Another thing you can do is you can make the scale increase for a little pump. A lot of times you can edit it to the music if you have music. You should have music in your intro. I want to like reiterate that it's JSV Productions. I can flip back around. You know, once you have your null object and everything created, playing with it's not that hard. And that's pretty much the basics. I'm going to show you some more specific effects that will help you now if you make a solid you can give it a um, a jaws a uh, CC jaws and if you see this is just the kind of rectangular transition if you want it to start black a lot of times YouTube will make it start black for a second so I generally try to start my videos black and then I can just make it open up into my JS productions so if you look here that's a really really boring you can change the height a little bit make it just more interesting you can change the width you know change the direction just a little bit I mean you can even give it like turbulent or something how complex you want to make it so that'll open it up it's a really fast moving intro but it's a start you can play with it change it a bit you could leave it on that um, another interesting thing to do has you have to have music so let me import a music file. So another thing that would be interesting to put in your background, or you could even put it on your solid, would be an audio spectrum. So just make a solid. Go to effects. Um, generate audio spectrum. And as you can see, it kind of got these lines here. It's kind of hard to see, but that's your spectrum. So you're going to have to trace it to an audio layer. Mine's comp 1. As you can see, it very slightly moves. Yeah, it's kind of lame right now. So, you know, I'm going to start it at zero. Or one. Well, let me start at zero. Make my maximum height a bit bigger so it's more noticeable. You can make the thickness a little more so you can notice it. It can change so much. Um, obviously, it should be some greenish color because the pink looks weird, the green. That makes the outside different than the inside, you know. Of course, nothing white, but if it looks the same color. Um, you can also make it, this looks really neat, if you make it more than one color, actually. Um, you can see change it. That one looks neat. If I was to put that behind my um, thing, my uh, solid, you might be able to see it enough. Um, I can also, I can make it just bigger so you could see it. I think that looks pretty neat actually. So that's just some of the little effects you can do. So I made, it starts with the solid color more like the one that I have. So it's a little bit more complex than the one that I showed you how to make, but you can easily see how you could make this one. It's a little laggy, but 
you can see I integrated some motion graphics. So it just got to max out the masked out horses and then enjoy the video again. And then a little emoji smiley face thing and subscribe. So I'm going to show you where I got the motion graphics. It's a site called Footage Crate right here. You can make an account. It's free. You can buy the pro, but I don't have the pro because I don't really want to pay $49 a year. But it's honestly really cheap. You have just a ton of, if you go to YouTube, you have um, a lot of, I use the buttons. That's where you can see I got this uh, subscribe right here. And there are a lot of free ones. There's all sorts of you know, weather. Some of them are better than others. You can go to explosions. They're very good at explosions. You know, I don't know what you need in your videos, but there's a lot of actually really good motion graphics that I think are good to use. Um, if you go to buttons and icons, here's the animated emojis. You know, that's the one I use, the wink. They're like the kiss, you know, they're just little simple um, animations which are cute and it saves time from having to make them yourself or whatever. So that's very helpful, especially when you want to make them like this, which looks decent. It's got the same texture background, very similar style. But you can make things as complex as you want. It's got the, the gradient wipe that's actually revealing the smiley face, which is different. And it's just, you play with it, add some things, see if you like it. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment and ask them. If there's any other tutorials you'd like to see, feel free to request it. I'd happily make some more. Hopefully you find this helpful.